Hello, and welcome to Trend Micro Cloud One. If you already have a sense of where your security could be improved in your cloud operations, that's great. Select the matching Cloud One service tile to meet the underlying cloud security use case, whether that's a service like file storage security for malware detection in cloud object storage, or a service like network security for monitoring inbound and outbound traffic to your cloud environment, just to name a couple of examples. If, however, you're looking for a place to get started, we recommend integrating a cloud account into the platform and trying out Cloud One Sentry in order to perform agentless scanning and discovery of risks within your deployed compute environment and provide additional insights for remediating those findings, all without impacting application performance. Let's take a look. Here we have two windows our Cloud One dashboard, and a target AWS account we would like to monitor using Sentry. So in order to begin, we can start by clicking the Get Started with Cloud Sentry button and then connecting our AWS account. At the time of this recording, the only option to integrate into Cloud One Sentry is to use an AWS account. And let's be mindful that when we launch our cloud formation template, we want to deploy into the region where our resources are hosted that we want to monitor. So if we have our EC2 instances, Lambda functions, and ECR registries in US East 1, we should be deploying into US East 1. Also to note, this connection is the integration of Cloud One Central to list all of the aforementioned resources. But if we click into View Configuration here, we'll see that Cloud Sentry is on by default. And this is what's going to analyze those aforementioned resources and make the determinations about risks that those resources could pose in our environment. So I will click Launch Stack, and this will open a new tab in our targeted AWS account. I already have a session cached. If not, you would have to log in here. Here in the Launch Stack window, we actually don't have to make any changes to the parameters listed. Actually, we're prompted, if you'll see here, to not modify any of the fields below. If we wanted to, we could alter the stack name if we find that we don't want to overlap with any other deployments. Usually you could accomplish this by appending a random string of numbers to the end. I'll do that now. But scrolling a little bit further down, we simply have to acknowledge the creation of IAM resources and then create the stack. I'll give this just a moment to finish provisioning everything and give us the outputs that we need to take back to the Cloud One platform. And welcome back. All in all, that cloud formation stack took about four minutes to finish provisioning. And now we have our cloud one role ARN value that we can copy and take back into the cloud one console to finish the backend connection. So let me go ahead and grab this value here. And then pasting it, I'll also give it an alias and a very brief description and click connect. So now that we've verified the connection to our AWS account, if we go over to Cloud One Central, we'll see that Cloud One needs a little bit of time to conduct the initial assessment of all of the resources in this AWS account. So I'll pause here, and when I come back, we'll take a look at a scan that is already completed and review some of the findings. See you in just a moment. And welcome back. The keen-eyed among you will notice we are in a different AWS account now. Like any good cooking show, we always keep a backup one in the oven so we can show it right away. And here, in the finished Cloud One Central scan, I'm actually over in the Resources tab to start. The Resources tab just gives us an overall view, a high-level summary, if you will, of all of the EC2 instances, container repositories, and serverless functions discovered in Cloud One Central's initial assessment of that connected AWS account. But where we're interested in going is in the extension of Cloud One Central into the Cloud One Sentry scanning, 
which we can view over in the Findings tab. Here, Cloud One Sentry detects two types of threats in our compute services today. The first of these are malware findings. These are malicious objects detected in the EBS volumes attached to our EC2 instances. Any malicious objects being hosted in images in our ECR repositories. Or within our Lambda functions, any suspicious or malicious objects in functions with deployment packages that are packaged as zip files. One thing that is important to note is that your sensitive application data remains in the AWS account during the scanning process and is not exported from your environment during a Cloud One Sentry scan. It is analyzed locally and only metadata about those objects are sent to Trend Micro backend systems to generate the findings that you see here in Cloud One Sentry and Cloud One Central. The second type of findings are integrity monitoring findings. These are generated when Sentry detects suspicious changes to the host OS of your EC2 instances, like, for example, the addition of new artifacts or the editing of directory permissions that could be considered potential indicators of compromise or attack. As part of the workflow of Sentry creating these findings within Cloud One Central, we have one more part of the resource and risk discovery process available today, and that is remediation. So for this example, integrity monitoring finding, I'm going to click remediate and we'll see here we get a couple of instructional sets. The first is going to be a process that we can perform on the target EC2 itself. And then in the upper box here, we actually receive instructions on which Cloud One service would be relevant in helping us remediate this risk from our environment. If we click the Protect button here, we open in a new tab the Relevant Cloud One service. In this case, this would be endpoint and workload security for protecting this EC2 instance. And then within each of the hyperlinks here are direct links to the relevant portion of the documentation to help us understand how we can use the Cloud One service to perform the protection necessary. Hopefully, Deploying Sentry to a target AWS account has given you an idea of where you want to head next within the Trend Micro Cloud One platform. Whether that's deploying an individual service or using those Sentry findings to understand what risks in your environment should be prioritized. If you have any other questions about Cloud One Central, Cloud One Sentry, or any other Cloud One service, feel free to reach out to a Trend Micro team member. Until then, let's keep building securely together, and I hope you have a great day.